as, as a practicing doctor, it's incredibly frustrating to me that insurance companies, most are for-profit entities. So patients are having higher premiums, they're paying into the system, and then they come in and they're incredibly frustrated that whatever they need is not covered. And they say, but I have insurance. And, and they don't get that the, the motivation of the insurance is to keep as much profit as possible. It isn't necessarily to pay Business for what you Business people are running medicine not doctors. A business person can get in the head of all healthcare providers making all these decisions, but also even convince, quite frankly, a doctor who probably went into the field of medicine for the right reasons, spent a better part of a decade training, but then dangle this, okay, you use this, we're gonna pay you an extra $10,000, the more you, and to the point where they literally do sham surgeries and ruin people's lives. I was approached first when I started my practice about 10 years ago, nine years ago, it was early on, I was approached by this gentleman saying that, okay, these are the screws. If everybody uses all these screws, we all make money. And the more you use, the more we make money. And with the other surgeons, if you guys all use it, minimum 10,000 a month to 40,000 a month, automatically just like that. And it's been shown that, you know, that some of the physicians who use this, all of a sudden the rate of surgery and fusion goes up. Now, greed, you know, can cloud your judgment. 30% of Medicare spending, it's estimated, goes to care that is unnecessary or harmful. And we live in a country Absolutely. where we talk all the time about we don't have enough money for healthcare. We spend more money on healthcare than any other developed country in the world, and we have the, some of the worst healthcare outcomes. And why? Yes. 30% of Medicare spending is unnecessary or harmful, and yet no one's talking about this. No one's talking about this. Part of that Medicare spending went to this doctor who ruined people's lives. So I wanna ask you this, in your, in not just your field, but in general, I think it's actually at a point where the onus has to be a little bit more on patients because I think we've, yes. we've been naive. Educating the patients. I think one of the main things all the patients can look into is go where you're gonna have surgery, talk to the nurses. The nurses have seen it all, you know, they have seen multiple spine surgeons, same procedure, they can talk to you about the outcome and give you their uh, honest, honest belief about what is going on. Get references, if you cannot get three references from that doctor, that's a problem. And the other thing is that ask the doctor, are you financially you know, benefiting? And I, I think if someone's also rushing you into a procedure that really should Absolutely. be elective, right? Spine surgery, we're talking spine surgery here. Spine surgery is most of the time, thank God, it's elective. Unless your, your arm is so weak or your leg, you know, you know that you're very weak and something bad can happen if you don't have surgery, but that's very rare. Most of the time you're having surgery because of pain and pain is not emergency. Mm -hmm. And well, the good news I will say is we have some of the best spine surgeons in the world in this country and they right. can do amazing things. So right. kudos to all those docs out there yeah, doing well, those I've things. But this and and doing it the right way. Doing it, doing the right it way. ethically, yeah, doing it with he, the patients. He, he offered non-surgical options first and uh, left surgery as a, as a last resort and, and gave options. I think, Most yeah, I of think the time. I've yeah. had some patients who've been told they need emergency surgery. They've seen me. I get every other week I see a patient who's been told they need surgery next week and most of those patients don't even need surgery. Now they're told they need emergency surgery. Like they need to have surgery in a week. Well, we're, we're all learning as we go here. Dr. Melman, thanks for being with Thank us. You.